Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the rainy Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be, it wasn't that bad. Think about that for a minute. Everyone, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So you were in a narcissistic relationship, or perhaps you're in one right now, and you are thinking, wow, is it really that bad? Is it really that difficult? Are, is this person who I'm thinking about was that relationship really that bad? Think about this for a minute. You are on the channel getting the wisdom, getting the education, and you're coupling that with your experience <clears throat> from the relationship. And many times on, many times people on the healing path, what they will do is they will say to themselves, in retrospect, they will say to themselves, wow, was it really that bad? It was. We need reminders of exactly how the relationship was. You see, when you were in the relationship with an individual who turned out to be a narcissist, let's say, you weren't prepared for it. You were most likely a giving, kind, loving, empathetic individual, somebody who was trying to work towards a future, trying to build something, trying to create something. Now, was the narcissist, were they trying to build and create? Perhaps they were, but they had an ulterior motive. In other words, they most likely were trying to take your resources from you which again includes your time, your money, your energy, your effort, your love, your empathy, your drive, your commitment, your social circle, your status, any tangible assets, whatever they could get their hands on, that's what they wanted. And they wanted it as soon as they could get it. Now, was it really that bad? People, many times post-narcissistic relationship, they consume videos and they think about the, the relationship. And when they've separated themselves from the relationship, let's say a, uh, a year, two years, five years, 10 years, they reflect back and they say, well, maybe it wasn't that bad. No, it was that bad. Because that relationship changed you forever. It tested you to your core. It made you question yourself. It pushed you to the brink. And this is a fact. You see, if you were in a stable and or healthy relationship with an individual, you most likely wouldn't be on my channel. And again, thank you very much for being here. But what you would be doing is most likely you would be living a peaceful existence. Of course, that existence would have ups and downs like virtually every relationship has, but I am certain you wouldn't be, be have been gaslit or you didn't experience the smear campaign or you weren't stonewalled or given the silent treatment for days, weeks, months on end. You see, those are all the weapons of the narcissist. And there is a long glossary. There are many definitions and terms that you will have to understand post-narcissistic relationship. Or if you're looking to exit it right now, the same thing. Education is available for free. You need to use it and utilize it, if not now, when? But was it really that bad? It was. Go down in, in the past relationship and think about vacations that were blown up or holidays that were blown up or all the time that you waited for the narcissist to respond to a simple text or when you were perhaps picking them up, how long you had to wait for them to get out of work or, or whatever. Now. You may say, well, yeah, Andrew, many people are late. What's the big thing? The big thing is once or twice, I get it. But when you set a date and a time to do a certain thing, my hope is you keep your end of the bargain up and so does the other individual. That's not what the narcissist does. Remember, the narcissist plays on your empathy and on your not wanting to quit the relationship and on your determination and drive. Perhaps they played on your love, your empathy. They played one thing for sure. They played on one thing for sure, which was the fact that you did not know about narcissism and that once they sank their dirty fangs into you, it was the devaluation stage or the narcissistic fog part of the relationship. And many times this part was when you just got married or you just moved in or you just relocated halfway across the country or the globe or you just signed the dotted line with a business relationship or perhaps you just moved into a narcissistic, uh, your neighbor's a narcissist, things like that. This is what happens. So. Your average individual on the planet who is looking at the world through rose tinted colored glasses, they weren't prepared for narcissism. I can assure you that because they believed in the goodness of humanity and that most people had their best interests at heart. Nothing could be further from the truth. The truth of the matter is there are individuals who want to consume your resources. They wanna take your energy. They're the energy vampires and some of these people are the narcissists. What they wanna do is again, they want to use all of your resources, depleting you and your physical ability, your mental ability, your emotional, spiritual, intellectual. They want to take, <coughs> excuse me, all that from you. 
and they want to build themselves up. And once your resources are depleted and or you're catching on, you're slowly discovering that this person is perhaps a toxic individual or a narcissist, that's when many times they will unveil the new supply and they will piggyback from you to the new supply saying that you are a not good person, hence the smear campaign. Remember those days, smear campaign, you weren't prepared for that at all, just like you weren't prepared for any twist and turn in the narcissistic relationship because why? Because first of all, narcissistic abuse wasn't taught in school. It needs to be. Number two, you believed that everyone had your best interest at heart, or certainly most people did, but certainly the individual in the, that you were in the relationship with, you believed in them, which means you believed in the mask and you believed in their false narrative. So perhaps when you first met them, they claimed that their previous, uh, the person, the, the previous partner they had, or friend or neighbor, whomever, they're, they're trying to blame this on, that they treated them poorly or badly. Notice how nothing is ever the fault of the narcissist. Notice how they can't take accountability. Notice how they won't introspect and they can't say, I'm sorry, I was wrong, I apologize, I want to do better. They don't do that. All they do is give you word salad and blame shift. So was it that bad? It was that bad. Think of all the sleepless nights you had. Think of all the time you spent being yelled at or all the rage fits you experienced. Think of all the times when you were thinking to yourself, wow, looking in a restaurant as an example, looking around and saying to yourself, wow, I wish I could be with a, uh, I, I could be a couple like this other couple, these other couples I'm looking at who are not on their smartphone phones, who are not triangulating the wait staff, who are not paying more attention to other individuals than you. This list goes on and on and on. How about this one? It wasn't that bad. It was. Were you one of the of, of the people who your spidey senses were tingling early on and you began to make notes about the relationship or Google certain terms like spouse won't talk to me or silent treatment or uh, what what's going on here? In other words, you probably most likely fell stumbled upon my channel and, and many others and or you typed in Google in the browser and looked up exactly some poor behaviors and then lo and behold, eventually you struck pay dirt you had your first light bulb moment and you stumbled upon narcissism and here you are. So if you're researching your relationship, I mean, you could say that that's a good thing. It is when you get the wisdom, but if you were in a stable, healthy relationship, would you be researching your relationship? Probably not. You probably would be planning for things like building a dream house or building a future or creating a business with somebody, whatever you would be doing, but you wouldn't be researching things like poor behavior, blaming me, unaccountability, things like that. So was it that bad? Think about it, ask yourself that question. We need reminders and only you have the answer to was it that bad? I can assure you if you made it this far in the video, it probably was that bad. Now, I'm not painting doom and gloom. Perhaps you had some great times in that relationship, I'm sure you did. But again, once you saw through the mask and perhaps you put up a boundary or you said the word no, which is the strongest word in the English language, that's when the tables turned. That's when perhaps the narcissist discarded you or that's when the game shifted. And again, in every narcissistic relationship, there are twists and turns. There are super highs and very, very lows. But the whole relationship is built on a house of cards. It's built on quicksand. It's built to make one individual, the narcissist, the priority to the detriment of you. Remember, the narcissist wants you simply to become an extension of them. They don't want you living your best life. They believe they own you or they're better than you or they're smarter than you or they know so much more than you but what do they actually do they just consume other people's energy they use it as their oxygen to go from person to person relationship to relationship and every relationship with a narcissist has an expiration date it really does it's just a matter of time when you figure it out and you end it and if you did god bless you you're very strong or if you got discarded my heart goes out to you but then you figured out that something was wrong in that relationship so was it that bad? You can decide that. I can assure you, if you really digest this message and you're being authentic and genuine with yourself, it was not good. It really wasn't. Because if it were, that relationship most likely could have stayed the course and could have continued on. But would you have wanted that? Of course you wouldn't. That would have meant more and more abuse, more and more manipulation, more and more toxicity. That is why when you understand that the person you're with or this individual, the friend, the neighbor, whoever it is, a coworker, if they are a toxic individual, that's why the path is if you can go gray rock, go gray rock. 
but I strongly suggest you block them, go no contact, delete them, remove all flying monkeys and people associated with them and begin saving your energy for yourself. If not now, when? That is the message, that's the path. So was it that bad? Was it really that bad? Uh, it was a big learning lesson. It was a big life lesson. And if you ever question yourself, because there are moments of weakness that people experience and they question themselves, was it really that bad? Really get out the pen and paper write the pro con list about that relationship, whichever one you're considering, and think of all the benefits that you had out of the relationship and all the not so good things, the negatives. That will open up your eyes again, that will enlighten you and refresh your memory as to the stability of that relationship. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas, rainy Carolinas. This is Andrew, namaste. Have a great evening, afternoon, or morning, no matter where you are, and remember, you are not alone. No matter where you are on the planet, you are not alone. Continue to move forward each and every day. Continue to become educated and empowered. Continue to become awakened and aware and understand that you are the priority. And digest this before I go. Was it really that bad? That's for you to decide. But if you went through a toxic relationship or a relationship that was one-sided, where all you did was give, 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 and you didn't receive, it's not good. There are so many beautiful human beings on this planet. You deserve better. You deserve more. So continue to move forward. Guys, that's it. I will talk to you tomorrow. Have a great afternoon, evening, and morning. I love you all. Stay strong. Continue to move forward. Bye-bye, you guys.